What's up YouTube? My name is Quickie, welcome back to the channel. Um, today is gonna be, it's a little bit different. Um, I've got him, I've got Jake. Um, I have been badgered and mithered and pleaded with and begged at and everything. Can you get me on YouTube? Can I come on the channel? So anyway, we're, uh, the, he's, he's here for the day. Um, Steve-O isn't, so it's not a wide angle day today. Um, and the week has kind of gotten away from me a little bit and today I'm going to be finishing up the box pan break because I haven't done that. <laughs> it's just been a mental, mental week. Um, so I'm going to get all that done and Jake's here. He's going to give us a hand having a clear out and then we're going to service all the tools yep. and stuff to um, show people what we do. And I'm going to tell them the rules. What's the rules? What's rule number one? Wear safety specs like I am now. Cool. What's rule number two? Don't touch anything that's dangerous because it might cut your hand off. <laughs> and cool. And the third rule? Behave or else you'll stay in the van. There you go. Three rules. Easy, isn't it? Um, a little bit more on Jake later on because there is there is some stuff that I wanted to mention anyway. But um, that's what we're going to be doing. Um, the box pan break video is going to be a completely separate video and that's going to be in a different playlist. Basically anything that I make for the workshop, <laughs> any of the tooling or anything like that, I'm just going to stick in there so you can have a look, see. Yeah. Um, I think it's going to do the job and it's way cheaper than going out and getting a shop bought one. Yep. So anyway, that's what we're doing. Yeah. Come on in, how at it. Right, Jake. This all needs to be cleaned up. I feel it's got all little bobbly bits and stuff on it. This is my welding table. So, your mummy's going to freak when she sees this. But this is a power sander, right? A power sander? A DA. So, all we've got to do is pull that back and press the trigger. But okay. you have to use two hands. Keep it flat. And when it's going, go all around. Right? Keep it away from yourself. So, two hands, two hands. This one? Right, that one goes on there. That one goes like that. Pull it back. Pull it back. <laughs> cool. Job well done. Right, this is the mucky bit. Take your gloves off. Okay. Right, so this is my old welding table. It has seen better days. It's not flat. Not even a little bit flat. But it has lasted me well. Um, the only thing I do on it is uh, grind all the spatter and stuff off. Um, as you see, we're just with the DA and stuff. And then oil it. I do that like once every, I don't know, couple of weeks, something like that. And that's it, jobs are good. It's lasted ages actually, it's doing really well. This is the mucky bit. Okay. Right. So, this is just ACF 50, but any oil will do. Doesn't really matter. Rub it in all over. All over, get your hands filthy. You're in a workshop, that's the law. Filthy. Yeah. Got it? Yeah. There you go. Mucky, isn't it? Yeah. And then give it a wipe down. And that's all I do. Right, as you might have noticed, Jake isn't your average kid. <laughs> nothing average about Jake. Jake's autistic. Um, and I wanted to mention it in this because I think they get a bit of a, of a bad deal actually. Um, I never met an autistic kid until I met his mum. Um, and I mean the autistic spectrum is massive. It could be anything from he's a little bit quiet to full on bouncy flappy hands walking on his toes and obsessed about everything which is kind of where Jake fits in, really. Um, basically, they're just wired different to you and me. They see the world as a magical place. Um, 
tend not to have a little, you know, as much common sense as, as most folks, which leads to its own challenges. But they're just different. Um, they can be inappropriate quite a lot of the time. <laughs> he, he, he does go off on one. Like, a lot of it's frustrations and all that kind of stuff, but you could be walking through Tesco's and he's happy as Larry. And then he has an absolute epi meltdown because they haven't got the right color drinking straws. That's the sort of thing that you're dealing with. And it comes out of blue. There's no rhyme or reason or anything else. You don't have to understand autism. You just have to accept it and find a way to deal with it, basically. So I wanted to mention it because although he's got no common sense, in the workshop, he is actually really good. He does as he's told. There's no mucking about or anything else. He just, you know, he's great. And I am going to teach him how to use everything in it. One day he's going to build something. I ain't got a clue what, but we are going to build something in it and he's going to do it and he's going to do all of it. Um, but yeah, a lot of people don't understand and appreciate autism. They just think it's a naughty kid or an unruly kid or a kid that hasn't been brought up very well or anything. And it's not that at all. That does my crust in actually. Um, cause, cause people just, well, I mean they're rude and horrible about it. For example, the whole Tesco's thing. Next time you're in Tesco, the parents of an autistic kid have so much to put up with. Really, really do, it is hard. So next time you're in Tesco's and there's a kid having a spastic fit and his, his mum stood there, she's like either flabbergasted or just downtrodden, doesn't know what to do next, or she's losing the plot as well, anything like that. Don't just like tut or, you know, shake your head and walk off or give a scornful look. Just pause for a minute and think, I wonder if he's autistic. That'd be a refreshing change, wouldn't it? Because the one thing that poor woman needs at that time is a little bit of understanding, not a condescending look or a shitty remark. <laughs> I'm going on, and I? But there you go. Um, so yeah, Jake's autistic. And he's brilliant. I can't like it. Right, what am I doing? Let's set up an end stop. Uh, next job. Yeah, what? Right. All the tools in here are rubbish. They're all budget, they're cheap as chips. Most of them bought off eBay. There's no snap-on, there's no FACM, there's, there's none of that. <laughs> cheap as chips. However, I do try and look after them. So, I've had these for like years and I think I've only ever broken one spanner. And if you do look after them, they'll, they'll, last they, they will last, won't they? Yep, they'll last a little longer. Right, so, all I do with, Anything that goes in the toolbox is rubbish. I got rid of my shitty little red one because it wasn't big enough, and I bought a bigger shitty black one. <laughs> but and end of the day, the, all I need is something I can afford, something that's big enough to put everything in, and, and something that's on wheels. Yep, and it looks like a Marshall amp. It looks same. like a Marshall amp. Fair enough. Right. So anything that's in here. As metal, basically, I just squirt it down with WD-40 to, you know, if it's mucky to clean it off. And then this ACF-50 stuff, yeah. um, I just wipe it down with that. And they, they're, they're fine. There's nothing wrong with them at all. So your job is, there's that. Okay. A rag and that. If it's silver, give it a squirt and give it a clean. Okay. Right? Right, so, next job. Um, as you would have seen in an earlier video, I, I managed to kill one of my angle grinders. <laughs> it's only a cheapy Makito thing, but and I do tend to get through them. Um, trouble is with all this sort of stuff, it just gets choked up with dust. And because you're grinding metal, all the dust that's coming, it's got, it's all like little bits of metal in there as well. 
So by the time it all goes in there and clogs everything up, one, it runs hotter, two, with all the metal that's in there, it's probably going to short something out, and it just burns out, basically. So every couple of weeks or whatever, all I do is grab an airline and blow it all out. Just get rid of everything that's in there. Um, and it don't take long. So, airline. Check. All the little holes. Okay. Yeah. You got to blow all the dust and rubbish out. Okay. Right, so this is my air compressor. It's um, <laughs> it's grubby. Um, it's an SDS air compressor. It's a 100 litre one, um, and it's 14 CFA, so cubic feet per minute. Um, most of the ones that I saw online were sort of seven or eight CFM, which is all right. Yeah, you know, it's not so bad, but if you're doing stuff like running a shop blasting cabinet or you want to do spray painting, anything like that, you really want something a little bit bigger. Um, hence the 100 litre, um, three horsepower and slightly more CFM. Um, the only real maintenance there is to do on this is you've got to drain it out. Um, so once a week, all I'll do is, I don't know if you can see it, but under there, there's like a little bung. Um, we'll get you in a minute, you can have a look, see. Um, but as you pump air into this thing and it stores it all in this, um, this cylinder, uh, obviously it's all squashed together so water condenses. This is just made out of steel, water and steel, you know what's going to happen, it's all going to rust. And you get loads of crap and muck and bleh in there as well. Because uh, the air filters on this are pretty basic, it has to be said. Um, so once a week it's just a case of draining it out. And you'd be surprised how much comes out of it actually. Um, all I've done is um, I've just had the air hose on it, so there's no pressure in this at all. It's all been turned off and that, so that's all cool. And if we shove that under there to catch it, and just loosen off this bung at the bottom. Don't need to do it all the way. But you can see all the stuff that's coming out of it, and that's just the water that condenses because it's just air under pressure. And it's not a nice colour either. So you know the inside of it's rusted. I'm not sure if they coat the inside of these with anything or not, but yeah, it's not so great. <laughs> and this is just during the course of a week. So, if you haven't done yours in a month, or you haven't done it since you've got it, I wonder how much water there's got sitting inside your tank. It's worth thinking about, eh? Anyway, we'll let that drain out. Um, there is obviously a little bit of air pressure in it, but that just helps push the water out. I wasn't going to sit there and hold it for ages. Um, the only other thing to do on this is to uh, give the air filters a clean out. Because obviously workshop environment, lots of grinding, dust and all the rest of it. Um, what I'll do is I'll, once it's all sorted, I'll charge it back up again. I'll just blow it out with an airline. That's cool. And the other thing is to check the oil level. Um, essentially, it's just an electric motor that drives, in this case, two cylinders on top. Um, and then it's, it's just a, an air pump, basically. And it charges up pressure in the main cylinder. That's really, really basic, and the oil is there purely to lubricate the uh, the pistons. There you go, looks like we've done. Well, that's quite a lot of water in the space of a week. It's worth doing. Um, as with everything in here, it will get squirted with WD-40 and get wiped down and cleaned off, and then I'll just cover the whole thing in ACF-50. If you haven't got ACF-50, someone did comment on this, why ACF-50? Don't worry if you haven't got it, just an oily rag. <laughs> um, before I discovered ACF 50 it was just I, I just used to use engine oil anything like that will do 
you know, it's, it's not got to be latest and greatest and cost a fortune or anything else. Just oil just stops things rusting. All the connectors and stuff on this, um, they all get covered in it as well. So I'll unplug everything, oil it up, stick it all back together again. Um, I did used to have a compressor in an outside shed when I was doing the airbrushing and all that stuff, and those connectors do rust. So it's worth just giving them a coating in something that will stop it. All right, air tools. Um, I've got a collection. <laughs> They're not very expensive, and if you've got an air compressor, it's worth considering getting some of these things because they're dead handy. This thing is probably the handiest thing out of all of them, if I'm honest. <laughs> I use this air gun for, you know, blowing out the drills and the milling machine and blowing down machine, you know, like the welders and all that kind of stuff, just because it forces air into places that you can't necessarily get to and gets rid of all the dust. There is an awful lot of especially if you're grinding there's a truckload of dust that gets everywhere um, and it will block up your tools and make them overheat and just cause all sorts of nastiness so at the very least get one of them dead handy um, this one this one this one and these two I've got as a complete set so there's an air chisel an impact drive a drill um, this thing is brilliant. It's a little, it's like a mini DA sander, which is really, really cool. And then there's a grinder as well. So it just takes um, paper discs on a Velcro backing pad. But those things are absolutely brilliant. Um, the only thing I will say is you do need to look after them. Again, exactly the same as anything else. It's dead easy. Um, because you get water in the compressor, if you've got water in there and you hook one of these up and turn it on, that water is going to go through, or, or, you know, the, the moist air that's inside the cylinder is going to go through your tools. Um, so if you don't oil them on a regular basis, you know, expect them to fail you. Um, some of them, like the impact gun, there's a specific place to oil it. Um, so it's just Allen key undo that and all I do you can use like light machine oil they do sell oil specifically for this sort of stuff as far as I can tell it's the same as the good old three-in-one but this is a real thin oil and literally you just putting a few drops in I put through you know maybe four drops something like that do it back up again and just run it up on the airline and what will happen is it will blow the oil through the whole mechanism and it just lubricates stuff and help stop stuff from rusting basically but they're brilliant so that's all you do um, some of them like this doesn't have a specific oil point like the gun does so all you do is is shove the oil in the, the fitting on the end then hook your hose up give it a blast and it does exactly the same thing um, it's all in the manual that came with them I think this whole lot cost like 80 quid off eBay you know, it's the Heim, Heimair, H-Y-M-A-I-R is the brand. Um, they're not the greatest, but they do the job. And they've done me proud for quite a long time. Um, so that's it. You can get um, inline uh, oilers for your compressor. So my compressor's got two outlets for it. Okay. Um, and the the inline oilers are a good idea but only stick them on one outlet if that makes sense um, if you want to do spray painting or anything like that you do not want to have oil in your lines in fact you would ordinarily have a whole load of filters to take moisture and oil and everything else out of it um, but if you're running power tools such as this it's quite a good idea to have an oiler in line purely because then you don't have to do all this mucking about on a weekly basis truth be told i probably still would but um, and literally all it is is a little canister, you top it up with oil, stick it on the outlet and it just delivers a, a small quantity of oil in the air that gets fed to the tools that's on the end of it. Um, like I say, only stick it on one though if you are going to use your compressor for spray painting because I mean you don't even want water in it if you're doing that. Um, but they're quite a good idea. I will get one eventually but currently it's quite low on the list of priorities. <laughs> so anyway.
Okay, the cheap and nasty bandsaw. <laughs> Everything in here is cheap and nasty. But I don't care, because it does the job. Um, this is the main problem that you find. Uh, I don't know if you can see this. Can you see that? Yeah, there you go. So this is what it produces. Loads and loads and loads of these little filings and stuff where obviously it's eaten its way through the metal. Um, I use this um, soluble oil, which is a contradiction in terms anyway. I use cutting fluid on pretty much everything I use, but this one's like soluble oil. Um, it's just like a 50-50 mix. I've got like a 25 gallon drum of it over there. <laughs> But you mix it up and it turns into this. Um, and I'll just squirt it on if I'm, you'll see in the videos, you know, if I'm cutting anything or drilling anything or milling anything, and I just don't want things getting hot and blah, 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 blah. I use some of that stuff purely because it helps drill bits last a bit longer. Same thing with um, blade on the bandsaw. It's just a good practice to have. So the big thing with this is blow it all down and then just, cover everything in in oil again that's it um check the blade with time they do come loose so you might have to tighten them up a little bit as they stretch with heat um and it's hard to do on this one but ordinarily i'd, I'd like to rotate the blade and just check to see if there's any teeth missing you will hear it when you're cutting because it will it'll kind of miss a beat um and you tend to find once one goes you very quickly it will just strip a whole load of them um but this one's had an awful lot of use i tend to use 14 tpi uh, blades they're the ideal for what i'm doing steel or alley um and it just does a good job the only awkward thing with this is this gap here um because that limits how much you can actually cut so if you imagine i had some stock in here cutting through it with this it will top out on this arm um, that really is the only limitation from it but apart from that it's a, it's a good little thing it does what I need anyway Right, there are, um, excuse me, there are some bearings in the housing, top and bottom that the main pulleys run around. Um, when I'm just giving it a general clean and stuff, I don't bother having all the covers off and doing all that malarkey. But about once a month, I guess, the covers will come off. I'll make sure that there's loads of grease packed in there and all the rest of it, but I'm, I'm not just squirting oil all in there and you know wiping it down. I don't want the blade slipping or anything. This is held under tension between two big pulleys. There's one here and there's one up here. Do you really want it slipping? Probably not. <laughs> that would be stupid. But yeah, so that's it. Just cover it in all, wipe it down, get rid of all the shavings. Job done. Next. Right, milling machine. It is a rubbish one. <laughs> it is a proper rubbish one. Um, but it does what I need. Ideally, it'd have a DRO so I could get a bit more precise with everything because the, the trouble is that the, the graduations and the slop, like that's the amount of backlash it's got. That's the slop in the screw from it being engaged going that way to engaged going that way. It's like half a turn, which is ridiculous. So I tend not to trust it that much. It's very much a case of machine what you're doing, then measure it. Then machine a bit more, measure a bit more. But, you know, it does all I need at the minute. Trouble is, it makes a god-awful mess. All this lot is off this. Um, this is where I've been drilling. 
So you can imagine what it's like if you're just facing something off, you get loads of debris. So first things first, everything gets blown off. So any of the attachments I've been using, in this case it's just a, a drill chuck, um, they'll get a clean up, just have a look, make sure it's all good, and they get covered in goo as well, because why wouldn't you? <laughs> everything in here gets covered in oil, everything. I make no apology for it, it's, I believe it to be a really good thing. And stuff is lasting, it has to be said. Um, I probably don't need to do all this, but you know, why wouldn't you? And all this stuff. Like I say, all this sort of stuff just gets put away, oiled up. That's it. Um, oh, I'm boring thing. And it's all just dripping. <laughs> um, I did use this as well. This this is the attachment. I've got a load of different collets um, that hold the. Uh, the end mills and stuff like that. They all go in this. This this is probably the one thing that sees more use than anything else, I guess. Being a milling machine. But again, it's the same deal. Just it all gets stripped down. It all gets coated in oil. And that's how it's put away. Right, so as for the rest of it, guess what? <laughs> it's getting covered. Um, this is, it doesn't tell you to do this in the manual. This is something, um, my granddad on my dad's side, he had, he was like ex-navy and stuff and he's got all his tools and this, that and the other. And he, he used to go on about doing all this, about oiling his tools. And it is, it's very true, every, all he had in his toolbox was swimming in the stuff but he'd had those tools a lifetime so 
you know, leaf out of an old boy's book. And like if you go through the machine shop at work, everything is covered. I mean, it's all like totally covered in oil on a regular basis. It's part of their routine maintenance that they do. I'm just, why wouldn't you, you know? Obviously nothing electrical is getting covered. It's all the, it's all the slides and the casting and all that sort of stuff. Um, the the vice on this is obviously a machinist vice. It's all ground, so it's you know it's dead flat and it's dead perpendicular and everything else. And you do have to take quite a lot of care over them, but that gets the same treatment. Um, it's just that when I'm not using it, the vice is kept closed, just because I don't want anything dropping in there and marring the surfaces up and or putting a burr on it and all that kind of thing. So it just gets covered in oil. Take most of it off. There's a hole on the end here as well, where you can pump oil in and it'll go around the lead screw, which that gets done as well. Um, all the bed gets oiled. that's it um, every now and then I will pull it all apart completely um, just I know it's got these these guards and everything else to stop bits of swarf and that getting into the uh, the lead screws and whatnot um, and it does do a very good job however occasionally something gets through <laughs> and I don't want it to mess anything up so Occasionally all the beds come off, it all gets cleaned down, it all gets oiled up and it all gets put back together again. Um, depends on how much I use it. This I tend to do, I don't know, once a week, I guess. Once every two weeks, something like that. Just depends how much use it's had. I've just been using it, this happens after I've finished using it. If it's just been knocking about a bit, but it's picked up loads of, you know, you know stuff where you're grinding and all the dust and all that sort of stuff then you know I'll probably let it go a couple of weeks before I do it but she's not bad I mean, she does the job just wish it did a better job that's all <laughs> um what else we got so shot blasting cabinet um it is dead good this is so handy for cleaning up things like you know um brake calipers and that kind of stuff. Because it's quite a size, you can actually get quite a lot in it. There really isn't a great deal of maintenance on this at all. Um, it's fed by air, so the connector gets, um, you know, a squirt of oil every once in a while, that's it. But the media that I use inside is aluminium oxide. It is, uh, what is it, 80 grit. Sometimes I use 60, just depends what they've got. Um, so it's not like using uh, sand or you know like the you can get different um, sorts of media that you can use for blasting um, they did do one which was essentially different grits of sand which I did use to use the only trouble is that it's in a tin box especially if it's a warm day you do get condensation and it all tends to clump together so it doesn't feed necessarily very well aluminium oxide is a lot lot better um, I've never had it clump up um, I keep it shut um, and you know I've, I've just never had any troubles with it as long as you keep the outside of it clean um, which this could do with a wipe down because of all the grinding that we've been doing <laughs> um, there is a filter on it that obviously gets cleaned but that's it really um, and this old beastie it's as old as the hills 
but it's still going. Um, I also have a parts washer. Uh, can you see that? Yeah, this thing here. Um, essentially, all it is is a pump that just pumps fluid around and it comes out of a nozzle and it goes straight back into the bucket again. That's it. Um, so big tin box with a pump in it. You can, you, know, you can make one easy enough. Just get like a garden pond pump or a fish tank pump or you know, any little pump like that and that'll do it. Um, the big flashy ones actually heat whatever you've got in there as well. Some of them actually have live bacteria in the mix and that's what breaks, breaks down, you know, some of the greases and all that sort of stuff. God knows what the bacteria is, but that's got to be the most inhospitable place on the planet. But anyway, I just use um, parts washer fluid. It's just like, I don't know, industrial strength detergent. Um, you mix it down five parts of that, uh, five parts of water to one part of that, stick it in there, jobs are good. And when it's not in use, like it isn't at the minute, I just leave it empty. Um, the one that I had previously, and this one to a degree as well, the inside of it does start to rust if you leave manky stuff in there. Um, so I just drain it out and I'll fill it up when I need it. So that's that really. Right, my welders. Um, basically I've got a TIG welder and a MIG welder. Um, and they just live in this un underneath the table that you saw Jake cleaning earlier on. He's done a good job on that actually. I'm quite impressed. Um, so with these, there is bugger all maintenance you need to do. Um, once a week, I'll blow them out with the airline. Um, reason being is just because of the amount of grinding that we're doing in here, um, all that dust, um, kind of, it just settles on everything really. So I've already blown these out and it's just to make sure I don't get a build up of that stuff on the inside. Um, at work we've had some instances where people have been grinding next to machines that they shouldn't have been grinding next to. Um, and all those, all those grinding, you know, a, a portion of it is obviously going to be metal because that's what you're grinding down. And you get a build up of that in a machine, it will cause a short and it will trip stuff out and it, it just won't work after that. Does not keep the maintenance guy very happy. <laughs> but with these, it is literally just, you know, there's no lubricating anything, there's none of that malarkey. Um, I was told with the TIG welder, use it or lose it. Um, he, d he did go on and explain it, but it's something about an inductance, so it was, I don't know. He used lots of big words. <laughs> but apparently if you don't use a TIG welder, um, it can cause problems. They do like, I suppose it's like any machine really, they, they just like to be used. That's what they're there for. Um, so yeah, it just lives on this table. And that's it, really. Earthlead doesn't go there, though. Yeah. Right, so... Drill bits and stuff, um, as I use them, um, once I've finished using them, I tend to just run them through this thing. It's one of them automatic sharpening things. Um, it is quite good, it does from three mil to 10 mil. I mean, again, it, it didn't cost hardly anything. Um, the only thing I would say with these is blow them out of an airline. Because <laughs> essentially there's a stone in there um, that is obviously used to sharpen the drill bits, but all the filings and stuff have got to go somewhere and it's only got a little vent in the back of it. So you have to get in there with an airline and blow it out or it will, it will not be happy. <laughs> well, that's it really. I mean, it, yeah, it don't take long. Um, and it is worth doing, I think. Do, you know, you, you pay money for tools, you should look after them. Um, and if they're expensive tools, definitely look after them. <laughs> um, so anyway, um, what are we doing now? Um, the the uh, box fan brake is pretty much done. I've just got to stick it together now. All the bits are made. Um, so I'm going to do that during the week. I'll get it finished. And during the week, I'll upload a video, which is the making of it, so you can see what's what. Um, and next weekend, uh, steve is going to be down. And we're going to start on the um, electrics tray and, you know, the 
sorting out the front bit and where the battery's going to mount and all that sort of stuff. So there'll be a bit more fabrication going on then. Hopefully it'll be a bit more interesting. I am sorry this video's not got any work on the bike. Um, but like I say, the week got away with me and I need to get the box pan brake done. So that's what I've been doing. But you'll see that. Um, uh, Jake was dead chuffed to be on the channel. It's probably going to be my most watched video just because he's going to be watching it all day, every day. <laughs> Bless him. Um, for those that don't know about autism, it is, I, I know he's only been in this a little bit, but it's, it is an insight and there's more people that um, have this than you would believe. Um, it is dead challenging for any parent that's got an autistic kid and most people just don't realise, just they're ignorant to the fact um, unless they've come across one, you know, someone who's, who is autistic and they've had to deal with it, so they've gone and found out about it or asked a few questions, they just think it's a naughty kid. And that's not the case. I am going to put a link to the autism awareness thing in the description. Um, we live with it every day. To us, it's just normal. That's, that's just Jake. But to others, that's, that's quite an eye-opener. Um, and there's loads of help and support and stuff around if you want it. Or if you just want to find out a bit more about it, you think it's a bit quirky, go and have a look, see. Ain't going to do any harm. Um, but like I say, I, I, he's been keen as mustard to get on this channel. YouTube is probably the biggest thing he looks at. He watches that more than telly or does anything else. Um, so anyway, it's made his day. Uh, if you could drop him a comment and say hi, that would just blow his mind. That would be funny. That would be so funny, actually. Yeah. Um, so anyway, uh, thank you ever so much for the, the, the folks that have um, subscribed. Also, we've had a few orders for t-shirts go out, which is mega. They seem to be catching on. So if you want a t-shirt, obviously we set up with Teespring. Again, there'll be a link in the description and a card thing. And I know the little clicky thing that comes up here. Yeah, I figured out it's called a card. I knew it was called something. It's not just a clicky thing. But anyway. So uh, the Teespring store is open. If you want to treat yourself to a hoodie or a t-shirt or a mug or something, go over and have a look, see. We do get a little kickback from it and all that is going to be going into the next project, which I am seriously looking forward to. We've got some good plans there. First, we've got to get this one finished. Um, so that's what we're going to be concentrating on. Anyway, thank you ever so much for joining us. Hope to see you again. If it's your first time here, do please subscribe, hit the little bell, and you'll get notified when the next one goes up. But anyway, that's it for today. Laters.